Until early this morning, some here in Kiev doubted that he would do it. Not anymore. The West warned Vladimir Putin was about to attack. He said he had no such plans. That fiction now utterly exposed. Explosions right across this vast country. In Ivano Frankivsk, in the far southwest, a missile struck an airport. Unverified images from Ukraine's northern and southern borders seem to show columns of Russian armor entering from Belarus and Crimea. Within hours, Russian tanks were reported to be on the streets of Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv. Whatever Russia says, this attack will not be surgical. To the east of Kharkiv, emergency workers battle to control fires in residential buildings hit by rockets. The number of civilian casualties is rising. At Mariupol in the south, another airport on fire. This country's civilian infrastructure is being heavily struck. There are no more flights in or out. A glance at the map shows a country under attack from east to west, north to south. Earlier, a snarling Russian leader said this was all in self-defense and warned Ukrainians to lay down their arms. We will strive for the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. Russia cannot feel safe, develop and exist with a constant threat emanating from the territory of modern Ukraine. In Kyiv, Ukraine's embattled president, who must now fear for his job, appeal to the world. Putin started a war against Ukraine, against the whole democratic world. He wants to destroy my country. He wants to destroy our country, everything we have been building, what we live for. So far, all the signs are that this attack is working out exactly the way Western leaders have been warning for weeks. The country is being attacked from all directions, and the fear now has to be that some of those Russian troops are heading here to the capital. Some people aren't waiting to find out what happens next. The roads out of Kiev jammed with traffic, most of it heading west. These people don't want to be liberated by Vladimir Putin. After weeks of extraordinary calm, this suddenly looks like panic. Mid-morning and two jets fly over the city. It's not clear whose, but it seems only a matter of time before Russia controls the air and much besides. Paul Adams, BBC News, Kyiv. Well, people here in Kyiv woke to the sound of air raid sirens up above as citizens who'd long prayed for peace now had to face war. My colleague Nick Beek has been gauging the thoughts of some of the people here to the extraordinary unfolding events. The invasion, the attack that Russia promised would never happen has now started and the Ukrainian government is urging people to stay calm and it's appealing to the international community to stop President Putin now. We soon find Lana and her mum. Russia forced them from their home in Crimea eight years ago. Now they're on the move again. It's very, very nervous and uh, I'm very scared, but uh, I, I, uh, I might be strong. After the overnight attacks from the skies, many are taking refuge underground. Well, this feels like one of the safest places in the city today, not just because there are lots of soldiers about, but because the metro is doubling up as a bomb shelter. And overnight families have come down here. They're trying to follow the news of what's happening and they're trying to work out what they're going to do next. Two-year-old Yegor is still smiling, but his mum and dad are worried. Eight bombs. Eight bombs. Eight bombs. And a body support. In English. English. The war stopped. I'm very, very scared for my boy, Alexander says. Then both parents ask, where are NATO to help us? When the bombs started falling, sales manager Mark helped his neighbours leave their homes. He tells me he's now ready to fight on the front line and die for his country. It's only one way uh, to... 
uh, serve our uh, country, our uh, children, our mo mothers, and uh, defend our country for, uh, from Russian occupation. Uh, and uh, we will fight uh, all day. Many are fearful of what will come next, among them Alexei. If Russia will occupy Kyiv, which I don't believe happen, because I believe in our army, well, it will be like uh, another Nazi occupation. It's still eerily quiet here in the heart of the capital. It seems many have followed government advice to stay at home. Lots of people will have also heard Russia's claim that it carried out targeted strikes on the Ukrainian military. I've got to tell you, people here are saying it doesn't feel like that to them. Instead, they feel that they're under attack and that President Putin has declared war on them. Nick Beek, BBC News, Kyiv. The view from here in Ukraine. Well, what about Russia? In an address on state television, Vladimir Putin claimed his country had been left no choice but to defend itself against what he suggested were threats from modern Ukraine and that Moscow would try to what he called denazify this country. From Moscow, Steve Rosenberg. From the president of Russia, a fateful decision. Vladimir Putin said military operation. But really, the Kremlin was launching a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Russian stocks plunged. The ruble hit an all-time low. Fears of conflict superseded by the shock of a war and what may come next. I think that if Putin is not stopped now in Ukraine, this war uh, would be the beginning of the Third World War. Vladimir Putin comes across now as a leader with an almost messianic idea to force Ukraine back into Moscow's orbit, even if that means war. What the public might think about that doesn't come into it. He seems determined to achieve his goal. In the centre of Moscow, we're against the war, she says, and we want the whole world to know that. But so far, few Russians have come out to protest. Maybe this is why. In Russia now, protests end like this. I'm sorry, I'm so shocked. <laughs> I just can't help crying. I think that most of Russians don't support this. It's horrible. And why don't they support it? Because uh, it's uh, not our war. It's war Putin, Biden or anyone else, but not our nation. I think the Ukrainian soldiers will surrender, she says, and they should. It's terrible to be at war with Ukraine. This is not a conflict the Russian public wants. This is the Kremlin's war. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, Moscow. Let's talk to our Eastern Europe correspondent, Sarah Rainsford, who's uh, in eastern Ukraine. Sarah, the front line in Russia's quarrel over the last eight years with Ukraine has been where you are in the east. What's the picture looking like now? line could be moving that uh, if Ukrainian forces have been battling pro-Russian, Russian-backed forces for the past eight years and kept that line pretty much in place, now those militias are backed by the Russian army. Uh, we know that they've rolled into some areas of the Donbass and we know that there is uh, some heavy fighting going on along the, the contact line, as it's known, uh, to the south of where I am now. Uh, we know there have been civilians killed today in one area and uh, that there's, there's, as I say, heavy fighting in several places. So people here, uh, back a little way from the, the front line, are worried about what that means. They're worried about an advance by Russian troops. They're worried about the fighting coming to their doorstep. For the moment, uh, life is kind of going on as normal. There are children out and about. There are parents uh, with babies. Uh, people have gone to work today, although school was cancelled. Uh, but there's this kind of air of trepidation about what is coming because people have seen what happens when this area is taken over by the Russian-backed militias before. Now it's the Russian army who's there too, and they're worried about what exactly that means for, for their lives going forward.